Hi friends, in today's video we're going to compare six affordable lenses, all for under $300, that each have Fuji X mounts and try to figure out which one is the one that you should buy. These six lenses represent the current affordable manual focus lenses um, for Fuji X currently available on Amazon as of October um, 2022. So prices and availability, obviously that's subject to change um, as the world ever increases in craziness. Um, but these are the lenses that we have um, found for comparison today. First off, we have the Photosy 1.6 35mm. These are all 35mm, so I'm not going to say that over and over again. Next, we have the TT Artisan here. Um, this is a 1.4. We have the Mikey um, uh, 1.7. I believe that's how you say it. If not, I apolo my apologies to however, whatever company this is. <laughs> then we have the um, Mitocon Zhongyi F2. Um, and then of course we have the two Seven Artisans lenses. We've got uh, um, the, the larger 0.95 aperture um, Seven Artisans lens. And then finally we have the uh, 1.2 Mark II Seven Artisans lens. So please use the chapter navigation below to navigate the sections that most interest you. Um, before we dive in, I do want to give a quick disclaimer about tolerances. Um, even with really expensive lenses, we know that there can be differences in quality um, between copy to copy. Larger manufacturers like Fuji and Sigma do a better job of managing these differences by very disciplined quality control practices when it comes to tolerance, what they tolerate as far as distances, measurements, that sort of thing. Um, but that level of quality control is expensive and so not all brands are able to do it to the same degree. So TT Artisan, Mitocon, some of these others, they're not going to have those same standards. And that means that you can expect wider variation in cheaper lenses. And unfortunately that also means for this video that what I have here might differ to a degree than what you might pick up from these uh, manufacturers. So you got to keep that in mind, um, your mileage may vary. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's dive into the comparison. And for this, we'll divide the rest of the video into two parts. In part one, we'll try to do a more scientific comparison in testing for all these lenses. And in part two, I'll talk more loosely about my experiences shooting with the lenses, show some photo examples, and pick an overall winner. So to begin the more rigorous comparison, let's start with price. Price here on the screen represents the current US dollar price on Amazon ranging from the dirt cheap Photosy up to the most expensive 7 Artisans 0.5. Next let's compare the weight and size. Most of you won't care about this but if you happen to have weak wrists like me or you shoot on the street um, all day or just want the subtlety of a smaller lens this might matter to you. Obviously that Photosy lens is tiny while the Mitocon is larger, not to the same extent as most of the Fuji zoom lenses are large. Um, so I would still consider this uh, Mitocon, uh, the Zhongyi uh, Mitocon lens to be on the smaller size. It just happens to be larger than all these other lenses. And when it comes to build quality and fit and finish, I'll discuss this in order of the lenses that I feel are worst all the way to the best. And no surprise, at the bottom of the list is the Photosy 1.6 lens. For this one, the focus throw is too short, almost, which I usually like. I prefer a smaller focus throw, but this one is just maybe too short. But it's also bouncy at the ends, especially the infinity end. It feels like it bounces off when you get to the limit, and it makes a bit of noise when it hits the ends. Um, the aperture feels good, but there's no detents and um, there's just a tiny little bit of surface area to grip um, for both throws and they're a little stiff. So other than that, I mean, it feels mostly metallic. I don't really feel a lot of plasticky elements, so that's good, but still overall not super amazing. The Mikey lens is next. Um, this one feels the most plasticky, I would say. Um, and the, the focus throw is not damped really, um, maybe maybe slightly, but it's it's just noisy and it's really more long than I'd like. The aperture does feel pretty good. It has more damp damping than the focus throw, but there are no detents, which is a pet peeve of mine. Um, also, I don't love that there's no indicators at 5.6 and f16, so it just goes from 4 to 8 to 22, oddly. 
I guess when you don't have detents, you might as well just not have indicators either. The Zhongyi Creator, the Mitocon, is next. Um, it's fine. The uh, It's more metallic feeling. I actually expected this to be the best, like really good, not really good, but I expected it to be pretty good quality considering the price. Um, but the focus throw is really, really long and it's not as damped as I'd like. The aperture feels horrible. It's loud and sloppy, um, but for once there are detents on that um, aperture ring, which is nice. But yeah, in general, it just, it doesn't feel as solid as I expected. It's a little bit too loose and sloppy. Um, and I'm bugged also by the lack of a uh, strong aperture indicator. Like there's no red indicator mark. So you, it's kind of buried in the middle of the, the focus range. So it's hard to see um, what, what aperture is being pointed to. And when your camera doesn't show you, that that's a problem so if i kept this i would probably scratch or somehow mark um, the actual place that the aperture is because it's not easy to see next up is the tt artisan 1.4 i've always um, felt like tt artisan does a decent job as far as build quality and this is no exception there isn't a lot of surface area for grip but i do like that um that they're offset that they're come out a little bit so that it it's easy to actually grab even though they're small, the surface area. So the aperture is, um, it is clicked, um, has detents. That's really nice and, they, and it does feel good. It's um, nice and damped as well as the focus throw. It all feels really good. Um, it's just slightly noisy maybe. Um, yeah, so overall it's, uh, it's pretty good. I don't have it here, but it has a screw on cap. And that isn't my favorite. I don't like screw on caps because they just take too long um, when you want to protect that front element. Um, I'd rather just snap it on. Next up is the 7 Artisan um, 1.2 Mark II. This one feels the most Fuji-like, I guess. Like when you feel it, it feels like, okay, that's what a Fuji lens feels like. It has a short, smooth aperture, or sorry, focus throw, um, which is good. And um, the, aperture's, uh, the aperture is... Uh, ring is detented it uh, is clicked um, but there is a tiny bit of slop in it overall still gets the second best award as far as build quality overall though it might be my favorite as far as build quality maybe tied for first is this and the other seven artisan lens the 0.95 this one really is a beautiful looking lens i, I love the markings on it um, the colors i love the gun metal mount um, it looks really pretty. It feels solid. It's nice and metallic. I love everything about this lens except that there are no detents. It's not clicked, the aperture, which is really unfortunate because otherwise this is my favorite um, build uh, quality-wise by far. When it comes to sharpness, again, I'll reiterate that the lack of tight tolerances can make these affordable lenses wildly different copy to copy. So all I can do is show you anecdotally what I see. And for this, I studied each lens at both the center and the corners at all their various apertures. And I rated them on a scale of one to five um, with, at each major stop and at the widest aperture. And then I figured out an average. Um, it's as scientific as I can get, and hopefully you can use it to at least get an idea of what you can expect at these um, with these various lenses. The two clear winners for me were the Mikey 3517 and the Zhongyi Mitocon F2. Though I'm quick to add that none of these lenses are particularly sharp, especially at the extremes of either wide open or fully stopped down. I didn't feel that any of these lenses deserved a four or higher, um, so which I might have with other high quality lenses.
Having said that, I think the sharpness can be overrated a bit depending on the type of photography you do. For the type of photography in my examples and how I shoot, which is more documentary style, I don't need the sharpest lens in the world. And I would be fine with any of these lenses as far as sharpness goes, with the exception maybe of the Photo C35 1.6, which is really very horrible. This lens has some of the most horrible field curvature which I've ever seen and that makes it so only things at the very center will be in focus and even those will never really be sharp and then out of the edges everything is just horrible. When it comes to the out of focus areas uh, we look at the bokeh quality and the amount of blur we can get with um, the depth of field of various lenses. This is actually a more nuanced discussion. It's not as straightforward since it's not as simple of which lens can get the most roundest bokeh ball, a bokeh ball because it also has to do with how, how close you can focus um, and there are you know different people like different things so for this we'll we'll look at each lens individually and discuss um, not surprisingly as the most expensive and the lens that with the smallest minimum aperture at least on paper I found the seven artisans 0.95 had the smoothest bokeh um, though even this lens has what I would classify as a nervous bokeh at some distances where you get sharper lines and not as much smoothness as you might expect but all of these lenses possess a busy or ner nervous background I would say this lens just has happens to have the least. The TT Artisan and the 7 Artisan 1.2 are very similar even though the TT Artisan 1.4 doesn't have the fastest aperture of all these samples. I see it as maybe the second smoothest background of all the lenses. Still not perfectly smooth obviously but not too bad. The 7 Artisan 1.2 Mark II is also about on par with that. Next up is the Mikey 1.7, which has a much, much more nervous background blur at many distances. The Mitocon Zhongyi F2 is a bit of an odd one. Its aperture isn't smooth at average distances from subjects like we've been showing with these other lenses, but this lens can focus more closely than the others, which if you're shooting details, can result in quite a bit of blur, obviously. Finally, we have the Photosy 1.6, which on paper has a horrible bokeh, but this is subjective, of course. It's extremely busy, it creates a bit of spiral, and I'd characterize the bokeh balls as more soap bubble in nature. And since this lens will only focus in the center, it gives this sort of tunneling effect, which can actually be used to create a certain effect that only poor quality lenses like this one can create. So this lens becomes actually quite an interesting character lens, and one you could use if if you like that vintage spiral bokeh look similar to like the Helios or the Petzval lenses. When it comes to low light access or actual light intake, I have seen it where the aperture number doesn't actually reflect in a relative way how much light a lens can actually allow through to the sensor. So I did do a test comparing these, but in the case of the minimum aperture number, um, these lenses do reflect. Um, which has better low light performance relative to the others. So if you need the lens with the, that will shoot the absolute best in low light out of these, that will be the 7 Artisan 0.95 as you might expect, and then just so on down the list. One thing I care a lot about with lenses that I shoot with is the ability to shoot close. Um, so close focus, or a better way to describe it is a lens's maximum reproduction ratio. All of these lenses don't publish actual reproduction ratios, as far as I can tell, so I did a bit of comparison myself. The Zhang Yi provides the closest to macro, giving an extremely close focus, but the 7 Artisan 1.2 is also pretty good, um, and it goes down from there. The Photo C 1.6 once again takes a distant last place here. It really can't focus very close, frustratingly so. With cheap lenses, flaring is usually really awful. Expensive lenses usually have some sort of high quality coating on them which controls the flaring. Cheaper lenses don't usually have anything like that and all of these lenses struggle with flaring as a result. Here's some footage of the various lenses so you can see that it's just pretty awful.
you can see how that shows up. For instance, with the Mitocon being um, one of the sharpest lenses and having the closest focus, I had high hopes that it would become my favorite lens of the bunch. But um, you can see how horrible the flaring is in extremely bright conditions. I tested chromatic aberration, but surprisingly these lenses didn't struggle with fringing like I thought they would. The Zhang Yi F2 actually surprised me being the one that um, struggled the worst. On some flat architectural shots at uh, mid-aperture, I did notice some, some distracting purple fringing that um, is not going to work um, for architectural photography for me. You can remove it, but I'd rather just not have it in the first place. Finally, when it comes to distortion and vignetting, all of these lenses are pretty bad. You just sort of have to plan on both distortion and vignetting if you're going for budget lenses. Um, probably the ones who control distortion the best are the Mikey 1.7 and the Mitocon. But the worst offender, as you could probably predict, was the Photosy, uh, which all the other lenses demonstrated some moderate to light barrel distortion. But the Photosy demonstrated some really bad pincushion distortion. So that's the breakdown of the more technical comparisons. Now I want to bring it back to the big picture, look at these lenses overall and tell you which are going to work best for different situations and pick an overall winner. But first I want to introduce this video's sponsor and ask you a question. What is the key principle of the best photo you've ever taken? Is it the balance? Is it the contrast? Story elements? Um, balancing principles like these makes for great photography, of course. But this balance can also be applied to the rest of your life, especially when it comes to building your investment portfolio. If you follow the news like I try not to do, you know the economy hasn't looked this bad since 2008. Stock market, real estate, it seems like there's really nowhere to turn. Um, I'll be the first to admit I'm no financial expert, but I do know um, that all these markets are connected, which is one reason I'm excited to introduce our latest sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks can bring balance, variety, and contrast to your portfolio with an under the radar asset that the wealthiest investors have hoarded for years. And one that holds a near zero correlation to traditional investments according to Citibank. Meaning when things like stocks and real estate are sinking, your investments in these assets don't have to do the same. It's not a stock or a cryptocurrency or NFTs. This is museum quality, multimillion dollar contemporary art. We're talking about household names like Picasso, Warhol, and Banksy. With Masterworks, you can invest in art at a fraction of the cost and potentially see some solid results. In early October, for instance, Masterworks sold a painting for a 21.5% net return. In fact, in six of the last seven exits, Masterworks delivered over 20% net returns to their investors. So no surprise, over 500,000 people have signed up so far and there's a growing wait list, but my subscribers can skip the wait list using the link in the description. So thank you Masterworks for sponsoring this video and allowing <laughs> this video to happen. Videos to happen again, yay, it's been a while I know. Um, so it's time for the big reveal. Which of these lenses get the vote for an overall winner? And fortunately, that choice is easy. I choose, where is it? The TT Artisan 1.4. Of all these lenses, this produced the least amount of flaring at all apertures, especially wide open. It is acceptably sharp for my uses as a documentary style photography. It can focus fairly close. Its bokeh quality seemed the least distracting, other than maybe the 0.957 Artisan. It has actual aperture detents, which I value. It's super small and light, um, and as a shoot-around lens at that 35 millimeter focal length, um, that's just great for always being on the camera, always being ready to, to take with me everywhere. And finally, the price point. It's just insanely cheap and affordable. It's the second most affordable lens on the list, and I'm really just impressed with the value that it offers. So again, this is just one copy. I can't promise the version you get will be up to the same level. And maybe it'll be better, I don't know. But this lens allows me to take some photos that I'm totally happy with and that I have no problem using alongside my expensive native glass um, photos. And yeah, it's my favorite. of people um, love the Mikey um, lens uh, that has in my in my opinion it's the second place overall I do like the lens overall um, but it's flaring is awful and the build quality feels a little sloppy and cheap uh, it doesn't have the the detents and it um, it doesn't 
uh, focus very close. Um, it's probably the sharpest of the bunch and it's about the same as far as price. So a solid second place and a solid option if you like it better for some reason. the lowest light um, performer that's the 0.957 artisan of course and I really love like I said the overall build quality um, if it had a clicked aperture that would help but overall still it's a beautiful lens it has the smoothest bokeh by far um, even when I compared them all at f2 um, this one was still the smoothest less nervous than the others um, but it has a lot more chromatic aberration than the TR, TT Artisan 1.4 and it's flaring just not great and I think it's just too expensive for what you get at that price point you might as well just get that Fuji 35 millimeter autofocus lens um, and that's gonna be a better lens hands down The Mitochon Zhang Yi um, lens was disappointing to me. I was really excited about this lens um, from a close focus perspective where it provides a near macro experience. Um, I thought it might um, be one that I would love. It might be the sharpest overall, but where it's just um, not working for me was that low contrast, that flaring. I didn't like the photos. Um, and build quality is not amazing. It's too big, it's too expensive. Um, for what it does. I don't have a lot to say about the Seven Artisans 1.2. Um, 1 it's fine. Overall, it's kind of average. It doesn't really excel at anything. Probably it's more expensive than it needs to be. It's not the lens that I would choose. We have the photo C lens. Honestly, I thought I would be taking some footage of me literally throwing this into the garbage because that's what I felt like it was worth. And while yes, this lens um, loses <laughs> easily in every category, there are two things that I absolutely love about this lens and that makes make me want to keep it. The first is that it's just dirt cheap. There's no reason not to own this lens if you're going to ever want to use it. If you ever think there's a time I could use that, I'll just buy it because it's so cheap. Um, and this might be the cheapest way to get some interesting character. And that's the second th reason I love this lens. It, it creates some very interesting character. It's what I would describe as a character lens much more than any of these other lenses are. And that, that means that you're going to get some interesting effects that you can't always control. Um, it's fun to see what you might get in different circumstances. To have a lens like that in your arsenal for as cheap as this one, I have the wrong one. How did this get in my hand? <laughs> As, as cheap as this one is, there's no reason not to have it. So anyway, that's, that's why I'm gonna keep this lens. But that's all, that's all I've got for you. Hopefully you found this helpful in some way in this day and age where um, it might be hard for you to be able to afford brand new, really expensive lenses. Um, if you're on a budget, um, this, this can be a great way to get into the Fuji system without spending a lot of cash. So hopefully this was beneficial to you or entertaining in some way. Thanks again for watching. Remember to do good with your cameras and we'll talk to you again real soon.